Um, Andrew. Hey, can everyone hear me? All right. Um, I was 12 years old sitting in eighth grade algebra class the first time <clears throat> that I ever felt it. Although I had no idea what it was at the time, I could feel the creeping aura over my shoulders. My left temple began to pulsate intensely, accompanied by a searing pain in the left side of my head, face, and my gums. Having never experienced a normal headache before this, I assumed it was just one of those regular headaches people always talked about, right? Unfortunately, that was just the beginning for me. After a few more attacks, uh, my mother began to realize this wasn't just a one-time thing and something was really becoming very wrong. We went to my pediatric doctor, who immediately dismissed, dismissed that what I was experiencing was legitimate. I was a young kid trying to skip school and responsibility. So we tried the OTC meds, the Excedrin migraine, tension headache, sinus headache, even that roll-on stick that's supposed to cure your headaches. <laughs> All the variables. <laughs> And after a few weeks of no success and a downward slippery slope, she realized this was not the solution to our problem. Considering that it could be something similar to but not head pain, I was taken to an ENT who diagnosed me with a deviated septum as the cause of my pain and booked me for surgery. After a complete waste of time, pain, and money, the thought occurred that my wisdom teeth could be coming in. I was taken to an oral surgeon at the age of 13 who said while my wisdom teeth were not coming in and I was probably a couple of years away, he would extract. Four wisdom teeth extracted with no pain relief. And let me tell you, that was a cakewalk compared to what was coming. <laughs> Once we realized my issue was not going to be solved as quickly as it came, my mother decided it was time to seek more professional help. My next stop was at a psychiatrist's office. After asking me some basic questions about my life and my background and why I was there visiting that day, he decided that the pain in my head was exactly that. It was all in my head. It was amazing. It took him all of 30 minutes of knowing me. See, I was bullied pretty bad as a kid, like many children are. I didn't have the traditional upbringing. Um, and because of these stressors, he proceeded, proceeded to diagnose me with somatoform disorder, meaning that the mental disorders or the mental stressors being experienced in my life were so significant that they were manifesting themselves in physical ways. Suicide headaches was my case. His recommendation to my mother, tell him to just make it go away. He has the power to make it go away. Don't give in to him when he's screaming. Sorry. Um, bless my mother for doing what she would do, taking the advice of a professional before consulting the internet. Um, we took it as fact and we went down that path. Um, weeks passed, uh, three to seven attacks a day in bed or on the couch, store, school. Um, and my mom the whole time would just say, you know, just make it go away. Um, it was really hard for her to say, as it was for me to hear. The mental torture experienced um, on top of the physical of an already completely debilitating disease was just, it was too much. Um, after a couple months of this, it was, uh, it was clear I couldn't make it go away. The psychosomatic diagnosis was the biggest blow to my mental health to date. To know the pain is so real, but the world tells you it isn't, is a special kind of prison-like torture. We found a local uh, GP who was willing to see me. Her name was Dr. McDonald, and at this time I was about 15. Dr. McDonald met with me, got caught up on my history, and came straight out with it. I don't know what this is, she said, with a puzzled look on her face. She did some thinking and said something like, okay, I think this is adolescent migraine, and that we can treat it with Topamax. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna refer you to the Diamond Headache Clinic in Chicago. See, there were no neurologists around my area that were willing to see someone so far under the age of 18. I was rejected by the medical community as faking it, and all because I was experiencing something unfathomable by the all-knowing and seemingly omniscient physicians. It just wasn't possible my pain was real. But she was so humble in her approach and realized she was out of her league immediately, but she did her duty as my physician to try and relieve my pain. To this day, I'm most grateful for her willingness to relinquish my care to Diamond, as she promised, if the regimen was unsuccessful. I was on Topamax for a little over a month before I tapered off and sent for my first visit to the Diamond Headache Clinic. There was no change. Day one at Diamond, age 15, Dr. Seymour Diamond requested my case and quickly became my life-saving headache doctor. From the moment he walked into the room, he sat his cane on the table, for those of you who may know him, looked me in the eyes and asked, what does your pain feel like? Only this time when I answered, instead of feeling like my words were going in one ear and out the other, while he thought about what was really happening with me, he seemed to be digesting my words and truly listening. He sat down, he didn't say a word, he flipped through a book and proceeded to say, I'm sorry to say that I think you have cluster headaches. I wasn't sorry. <laughs> I had a name for my condition. I finally had one answer. 
He never led me astray by telling me he had a simple fix. He never pretended to have all the answers, but he listened to me as his patient and he tailored my treatment around what I said worked for me. If biofeedback wasn't working for me, I never had to do it again while I was admitted on their hospital floor. If I was taking three to four times the dosage of Toradol that a normal, fully grown man would take, I could continue taking that as long as my kidney functions were fine. Now the DHC never cured me. They didn't actually fix or reduce my headaches at all. In fact, because of all the meds I was on, over 40 pills a day, my cluster headaches evolved over the next couple of years and I, became, and I began having more and more. Up to 14 one-hour attacks in a 24-hour period on a consistent daily basis at the age of 16, we couldn't figure out why. Maybe I was just growing into them and they were progressing. I became classified as treatment refractory and nothing worked, but at least Diamond tried. For two years, they gave me a shot at treatment and put me on a path to longer-term recovery because of their ultimate failure to successfully treat my pain. At age 17, my mother divulged to me some research that she had done online. At this point, we were desperate and would have given anything to bring relief to my life. She explained to me about an online support group she came across by the name of Clusterbusters. You guys probably heard of them a couple times. This is a community where people that have been failed by the traditional medicine system, their doctors, and their treatments can turn to, not only for emotional support, but to what I would call the cluster headache holy grail of information. This ended up being the single greatest discovery of my life. The access to information that was available outside the realm of Western traditional medicine was truly invaluable. Now I understand your positions hold you to certain standards, and while I respect that, there was a particular doctor <clears throat> at the Diamond Headache Clinic who, when presented with our research, after years of pain and thousands of headaches, said, well, I can't tell you to do this. In your case, I wouldn't leave any stone unturned. He wished me well, and that was one of the last times I saw him, other than following up to share the massive success from my new treatment. Immediately from then on and to this day, I performed or pursued alternative forms of med med medication. Busting, as we call it, is the method we use to attempt breaking cycles and or facilitating a full remission by utilizing the chemical structure similarities in the psilocybin mushroom, LSD, LSA, and serotonin molecule. These molecules are so similarly structured that the psilocybin, LSD, and LSA can supplement serotonin deficiencies in the empty receptors, and that is shown in many to be a key component in their treatment, with many responding very positively. With subhallucinogenic effects, ingesting less than the recreational dose, and in some case even micro doses, many cluster headache sufferers have been able to mitigate attacks on multiple fronts, and numerous citizen scientists have gone into complete remission, using a maintenance dose once or twice per year. To this day, with, some of the, uh, with the help of some of the most impressive doctors and human beings I've ever met, I have experienced the greatest pain reduction and frequency in my 14-year cluster headache career, even if it took enduring over 30,000 attacks in the past 12 years. I appreciate your time and your willingness to learn from us. Wow, thank you so much, Andrew.